Holy Spirit's going to take control if I can't read any of my notes. Yes, um, we have a light. I, this could be light. Okay. I just want it, it would be helpful if I had a little bit of light, but um, I just want to say what a privilege it is to be with this group of people, this congregation of people, all of whom love for murder so dearly um, as I did. Everyone in this room, as Johnny said, has been so blessed to have her in our lives. And I want to thank Andrea for giving me the privilege of uh, speaking to that and how much she meant to so many of us. I'd like to ask everyone to try to get their heart focused on joy. Even though we're grieving, even though we're missing Roberta terribly, Roberta had a spirit of joy in the midst of trial. Amen. And that's what the Lord asks of us, to have a spirit of joy. Um, often Roberta and I, if we were leading a meeting, even if it was our small prayer group, we would greet one another or the group with, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so I would like to ask all of us to do our best to rejoice in this day. In her honor, in Roberta's honor, let us give thanks and rejoice in celebrating her life. Roberta loved and knew, the Roberta that we loved and knew so well of this, this side of heaven. And let us rejoice and give thanks for the celebration in heaven yeah. where her life yeah. is now. Yeah. <clears throat> and let us give thanks and rejoice for what Roberta has left with us, the legacy that we share. John used the word that I've thought of so often when he mentioned legacy because Roberta has touched every life and left a legacy with every person present, with every person whose life she ever walked into. And Roberta left us with this assurance. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me as savior will live even if he dies. Lyman and Andrea, Roberta's dear family and her friends, her sisters in faith, all of us know that Roberta loved a celebration and I want to speak in the present tense and say she loves a celebration. And we also know how much she loved the Lord. And again, I want to change that to the present tense and say how much she loves the Lord and how evident that was in her life. Um, let us be reminded of every good gift that Roberta bestowed upon us and recognize that those good gifts are even more brilliant, they're even more profound, they're even more radiant from heaven, and they exist still. Just because we can't see Roberta doesn't mean her gifts are not filling this room. Each of us gathered together today has memories of Roberta, our group memories, our individual memories, and Johnny alluded to some of these. We have memories of her treasured whispers in our ears yeah. of stories that she told that brought us comfort at the most perfect moment. We have memories of her bathrobes, her touches, her words of privacy, and her hugs that didn't end until they were really meant to end. She never hugged as if she was in a hurry to get to the next person. Um, Johnny also alluded to this, and I would just like to remind you of this because I think it's something that Roberta would say to us. And that is, the Lord is near the brokenhearted and those who are crushed in spirit. And in the same way the spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness, we do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should, but the spirit himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. We have all been ministered to by Roberta in so many ways. Um, 
And she has left us, we all know we feel so well, that she has left us for a time with a bejeweled legacy. What greater evidence of gratitude can each one of us who has been blessed to know and been shown her great love for God and for us, not in respect and love, carry on her legacy. And what is that legacy? It's a legacy of care and kindness, of wisdom and faith, of gentleness and graciousness, of intercessory prayer, of loaves of homemade cornbread, <laughs> of a touching card, of an act of kindness or generosity. These are the gifts that she has impressed upon our hearts forever. Many scriptures bring Roberta to mind, but I would like to share a couple verses that I think each of us will relate to. An excellent wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessing, the husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done ex excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and be beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Mm -hmm. And how well those verses describe our Roberta. As I close, in remembrance, please allow me to suggest a message that Roberta might leave with us if we could hear her lyrical voice today, just as we will when we are reunited when we gather in heavenly places with Roberta and our loved ones. I think Roberta might say this to us. This thing we call death is nothing at all. Do not let it disquiet you. I have only slipped into the next room. Everything remains as it was. I am I, and you are you. And the life we have lived so fondly is untouched. Whatever we were to one another, we are that still. Call me by the familiar, endearing names. Speak to me in the easy way you always have and put no difference in your tone, no solemnity, no sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed. It is the same as it was. There is absolute, unbroken continuity. Why should I be out of your mind? Just because I'm out of your sight. I am waiting for you. For an interval, I am waiting for you. I am just around the corner. All is well. All is well, beloved. All is well. As we often said to one another and to others when we parted for a time, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. We love you, Roberta. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that we are all united in the love of Jesus Christ and in the love of our precious friend, Roberta. And again, I thank you for the privilege of speaking about and for our sister.
I would be remiss if I didn't say praise the Lord. I know it's a song time, but I'm going to just sing. How can I not? You know, I come up here with the mic in my hand. I've got to share this, you know. I just want to say that Roberta was my first friend here in Florida. And um, it was here at Wellspring when I came into, they had a wonderful women's ministry here, and we were doing a study in the armor of God. And I walked in, and I was by myself. And she was sitting at a table, and she said, Would you like to sit with us? And I said, Yes. It's been a wonderful history ever since. At that table was my dearest friend, Roberta. There was Evie. There was Sue who's gone to be with the Lord, and she's rejoicing up in heaven with Roberta right now. And then at another table, there was Jan and Luann. And then at another, there was Cheryl. There were just so many. And it's, it's a, a woman's fellowship that we have. But Roberta was dear to my heart. Roberta was a neighbor, a friend, an ally, an encourager. We talked every day almost. There was hardly a day that went by that we didn't talk. So yes, and while our hearts grieve here on earth, we rejoice that she's up in heaven. You know, and the name of this song is Scars in Heaven. And I may not make it through the song, but you know, God is with us, you know. And we know that there's no scars in heaven but the, on the hands of him, right? Amen. So, Roberta, we just love you. We just love you. We just thank you for this time. If I had only known the last time would be the last time. If I would put off all the things I had to do, I would have stayed a little longer, held on a little tighter. Now what I give for one more day with you. Cause there's a wound here in my heart where something's missing. And they tell me that it's gonna heal with time. But I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased. And knowing yours are healed is healing mine. The only stars in heaven don't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken. And all the old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now, even as the tears fall down, is that the only stars in heaven are on the hands that hold you now? I'll fight the 
this fight in this race, oh run Until we finally see what you can see Journey. I'm a friend of Andrea's, and I asked her if there was something she'd like to say about her mother. So I'm going to read her passage to you. Today I would like to celebrate my mother and best friend. It was a very hard day on August 15, 2021. Nothing in my life has been so hard till the day I had to let her go. Now I've had time to reflect on her life and how much she has instilled in me. How to love, care, laugh and how to make memories I will cherish forever. She and I talked every day. She was truly my best friend and confidant. We shared our days, the good and bad, and like her, my prayer warrior, she would pray with me often. She taught me to be the best person I could be, even with my flaws, which made me, me. She taught me to love unconditionally with my whole heart, and that even in times of heartbreak, she would always lift me up give me words of encouragement, and of course, a prayer. Mama started her nursing career in the late 60s and started from the bottom and worked her way up. Some of her patients called her Dr. Roberta, even though they knew she was a nurse practitioner. Yes, yes. <laughs> I did not go as far as my mama did, but she was very proud of how far I did. I followed in her professional footsteps of caring for others. Mama had a way of making others laugh with her quirky ways of turning anyone's frown upside down. I could be mad about something, and she had her special way of saying something, mm -hmm. or would give me one of her big grins, and I could not help but giggle, and then we would talk it out. Mama brought me up in a Christian home and taught me the best person I could be, and I wish she was here so I could tell her all these things mm -hmm. in person. Yes. I know she knew but I would love again to tell her thank you for being the best mama ever. Mama and I made many memories together. Some of them that I talk about are road trips to the mountains, seeing my first snow, chicken pox when we lived in a small travel trailer in Miami while she was finished nurse practitioner school. We had many mother-daughter beach trips to Anna Maria Island, cruises in the Caribbean, and shopping excursions. One of the both things that we both liked to do was have high tea, dressing up and catching up. She also taught me how to love Jesus and have faith. These are many memories made me the woman I am today, and I have her to thank for them, and I will miss making memories with her. Yeah. I will leave you with a saying she used to say, and I know she said it to others, and it goes like this. You was kind, you was smart, you was important. So take this today and picture her saying this, and when you're not feeling like yourself, and pray, know that she is looking down on you with that big smiley grin of hers. <laughs> Honored to read for you. Thank you so much. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. 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 Thank 
Amen? Amen. It's always easy to do a celebration of life service for a woman yeah. who has fought the good fight yeah. and finished the race. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I knew that there was going to be some themes as I was preparing for my time. By the way, my name is Joey Atkins, and I have the privilege of being one of the pastors here at Wellspring. And, and as I was preparing for my time that I was going to share, I knew that I was going to come right in the middle, and a lot was already going to be shared, and a lot more was going to be shared. And I knew there was going to be some themes woven into talking about Roberta's life. I knew prayer would be one. Yeah, I knew prophecy would be one. Yeah. The one that I was unsure would be too strongly, but I knew that's the direction I wanted to go for a moment, was her hugs. Yeah. Now, i got to give you a different flair about her hugs. Because over the last seven years, I just happened to be, most pastors would say, it's been a privilege to be uh, Roberta's pastor for the last seven years. But when you have Roberta in your church, it's just a privilege to have Roberta in your church. I mean, that's somebody that can pastor the people even better than you. Come on, somebody. So it was a privilege. I'm just one of the last probably 10, 12 pastors that she had. I just happened to be the last one. I certainly wasn't the best, but I certainly was the last one. And so as I think about Roberta, I remember uh, all of her hugs and um, often with her health issues and with Lyman's health issues, uh, there would be weeks, if not even a few months where she wouldn't be at church. And so um, she would come up and do what she would do to everybody else. She'd give you a hug. And it would last a good 30 to 45 seconds. She doesn't talk when she hugs you. She just hugs. And then for me, maybe not for anybody else, and I just need some, come on, is there anybody else? Please tell me it's not just me. But she put her arm around me and she goes, you've been eating pretty well lately, haven't you? <laughs> or she'd make comments like, you put on a few pounds there, aren't you, Pastor? And so I always knew where my weight direction was going because of Roberta Benefield. Uh, but I did love her hugs. I loved her hugs. I loved her prophetic words. I loved her wisdom. I loved her life. Um, I loved her husband. And I know that we're honoring Roberta's life, but I just think Lyman was an absolutely incredible husband. And so today, as we honor Roberta, we honor you uh, as the man who led her and pastored her and and we honor you, and we're so thankful, Lyman, that you're still on this planet. Yeah, we knew that it was a rough few months for you, and that you're still here. Come on, can we give God glory for that? So we're glad that you are here. It is, it is my honor to be able to stand on this stage and to deliver a brief word in honor of your beautiful and amazing wife. So I just want to say thank you. Andrea, I just want to say thank you for allowing me the opportunity. I'll be brief, because a lot has already been said. And a lot will be said. But I do want to remind you that today is not a funeral. Right. Today is a celebration yeah, of life. Yeah, yeah. A funeral is without Jesus, but a celebration is when you know you've met Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And to know Roberta is to know a woman who's met Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And so I want to do just a few things that I do uh, typically at every celebration of life service. And then I want to add a little bit that I've never done at any celebration of life service. But I want to start in the way that I've done everyone because I think... It helps set the stage for a reminder for us today. The most famous uh, passage of scripture in the entire Bible is Psalm 23. And I want to personalize it for us today. The Bible says this, the Lord is Roberta's shepherd. Yes. Come on, for just a moment, can, can he just be Roberta's shepherd? Yeah. Roberta is no longer in want. COVID no longer has invaded her body. Pneumonia is no longer invaded her body. Sickness has no longer invaded her body. She is at home with Jesus. Amen. He makes Roberta lie down in green pastures. He led Roberta beside quiet waters. Jesus, yes, Jesus. His, her Savior, has restored Roberta's soul. He guides Roberta in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though, just a few months ago, Roberta passed through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. She no longer has to fear evil. That's Roberta calling, telling me I did something wrong and she wanted to change something. So I'm sorry, Roberta. I know you're trying to get to me. I'll change it up or I'll move quickly. I'm not sure what you want me to do. I wait too much. That's it. Thanks, thanks, Jan. I'm done. Why am I even here? As you were naming all of those ladies at the table, Joanne, I was thinking, just how encouraging you guys have always been to me. So thank you for that. Sarcasm inserted a bit. Right there, okay? Uh, you prepare a table before me in the presence of Miami. You anointed Roberta's head with oil. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Mm, her cup yes. overflows. Yes. 
surely goodness and love will fall over Roberta all the days of her eternal life. And Roberta is now dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. Can I just confess to you today that I'm a little bit jealous of Roberta? How many of you just thought, I don't want to preach a different song. How many of you, it's been a rough couple years for you. And I just want you to know, Roberta's in a good place. Because she's with the good one. Good shepherd, Jesus Christ. As we search God's word, we find a lot of adversity. And you know this, I know I'm in a room full of a lot of Christians and a lot of Christ followers. The Bible has a lot to say about life, but would it surprise you if I told you the Bible has a lot more to say about death than even life? The Bible talks a lot about adversity. It talks about how to live well, but it also talks about how to die well. It talks to us about how to shape our character. The Bible tells us how we can learn and grow and live in difficult situations. I love 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says this, God himself has prepared for us as a guarantee. You know how you know you're a Christ follower? You know how Roberta knows she was a Christ follower? There was a lot of reasons, but the most important reason we know that Roberta was a Christ follower is because she housed the Holy Spirit. Amen. But we can be confident, even though that we are no longer on this planet, that as long as we live in these bodies, we aren't quite home with the Lord. This passage goes on to tell us that the longer we live in these bodies, we will mourn and we will groan. We will go through sickness and disease. But God knew he didn't create us to live for 70 years or for 60 years or for 50 years or for Roberta's case. God never designed Roberta to live for 80 years. When God created the world and we created mankind, he created us to live forever. Yeah, that's right. But this created a problem. And you know this. I'm just, I'm just talking to you as a reminder today. Just call it a holy huddle today. Ooh. That when God created the world, he created you and I to live forever. You will live forever. Yeah. So we live beyond this place. But he knew in all of his infinite and sovereign wisdom... That when this earthly life would end, that we needed a place to live in with a perfect body, with a limited time, and a limited space. And so as he is leaving, as he spent the 33 most epic years on this planet, the three most epic years in ministry, and as he's getting ready to leave, he's talking to his homies, his compadres, his buddies, his disciples. And he says this, don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. There are more than enough rooms in my father's house. If it were not so, I would, I would have told you. And then he says this, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if it were not so, then I would have told you that that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to prepare a place. This is the key. And this is what, and this is why, and this is the reason why we celebrate today. Because Jesus said, I'm going to a place that where I am, there you may be also. Can I tell you, I'm looking forward to streets of gold. I'm looking forward to a beautiful mansion. I'm looking forward to streams where we can fish in. I'm looking forward to the banquet table of unlimited buffet food. Come on, somebody. But can I tell you what I'm most excited about? It's just being with Jesus. But that's not just my life. It was for 80 years, Roberta's life. She loved being a mom. She loved being a friend. She was an incredible mom. She was an incredible wife. She was an amazing friend. Yes, but can I tell you, she would have given up all of that to just be with Jesus. Because yes, yes. Jesus was everything to her. The good news is when you and I accept this faith, we can have that same thing. And I realize, especially in the last two years, there's been a lot of uncertainty around this world. And even right now, what our world is going through right now. Yes. There's a lot of uncertainty that's going on in our world. But can I just tell you, there's a whole lot more uncertainty in this world then there is an uncertainty of what happens after this world. We can be very clear. We can be very confident in what happens after this thing called death. The book of Ecclesiastes was written by Solomon. Outside of Jesus, maybe in the Old Testament, the wisest man ever walked this planet. I mean, he had everything that life had to offer. He had riches, he had relationships, but he never lost his critical mind, his critical thinking in he remained steadfast, and here's what he said. Now, you can't say this at a funeral. You can only say this at a celebration of life service. And he said this in Ecclesiastes, that you learn more at a funeral than you do at a feast. Can I tell you, over the last 43 minutes, we've learned way more about Roberta than we would sit in a Cracker Barrel talking about life. Why? 
You learn more about him. Solomon actually goes on to describe the day of our death to actually better than the day of our birth. That's right. Because life extends beyond this. And here's the added part that I want to give specifically to, to you. And I just thought about this as I was thinking about Roberta. The one thing I know about Roberta is Roberta loved Jesus. But the thing that I always remembered about Roberta when it comes to her prayer and her prophecy and her hugs, and she had this amazing ability to tell you something really hard, really offensive. Come on, somebody. Help me out. Maybe even quasi mean, but she did it with that beautiful smile and that loving embrace hug. And you walked away saying, am I supposed to be hurt or am I supposed to be thankful? I'm not sure. But one thing I know about Roberta, and this is where I want to kind of land my time together, is I just want to give you very, four very, I know a preacher shouldn't say quick. I promise you they'll be quick. I want to give you four very quick things about what I think Roberta loved the most about Jesus. I think if I could sum up Roberta's life, I think if I could sum up Roberta's love, I think she would, she would tell us today that Jesus understands. Can I just tell you walking this planet I mean, all the grief and the heartache that has been pastoring a church for seven years and being on this planet for 40 years, and for you as well, you go through heartache. Doesn't it just bring your soul just so much peace when somebody tells you, don't worry, Jesus understands. Yes. Jesus understands. Jesus understands. And so let me give you four things. Let me give you Hebrews chapter two says this. That's why we had to enter into every detail. This is Jesus. Every detail of our life. Then when he came before God as the high priest to get rid of all of the people's sins, he would have already experienced it all himself. All of the pain, all of the testing, and we would be able, he would be able to help us in our time of need. So when it comes to understanding, let me give you four things. Is Jesus and Roberta, can I just, can I add those two together today? I don't want to do any disrespect to Jesus and I want to uplift Roberta, but I don't want to put her on Jesus' pedestal, but I think they're simultaneously in these four things. Can you give me liberty to do that today? Yes. Yes. Jesus and Roberta understood relationships. Yes. They did. Jesus walked this planet. He understood relationships and Roberta understood relationships. Mark chapter six says this about speaking of Jesus. Isn't he the carpenter? Now listen to this. Listen to the graphic detail. Isn't he the carpenter? Isn't he the son of Mary? Doesn't he have brothers James, Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here as well? See, Jesus understood relationships. He knew his identity was in the people he did life with. He knew that. And Roberta did as well. Roberta had this, this, this posse of women that she just hung out with all the time. And what I love is some were older than her, some were her same age, and some were younger than her. She understood what it was like to be mentored, but she also understood what it was like to be a mentee. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's Roberta. She understood relationships. Jesus understood, Jesus understood the familial part of walking this planet and doing relationships. Here's the second thing. Is Jesus and Roberta understood life. He understood what life was all about. I love what Hebrews says. For we do not have a high priest... I want to encourage you with the scripture who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in the same way, just as we are, yet he did it without sin. Can I tell you, Roberta understood what life was all about. She understood what relationships were all about. She understood where her treasure was to lie. She understood that this world is where moths and dust corrupt and they, they pile up, but she understood what it was like to forward on life to the next life, eternal life. She understood. Roberta always talked in how this would affect the next life. Always, always. It was always about when I leave, I want this to be left. She understood a lot. Here's the, here's the third thing. Is Jesus and Roberta, come on, you'll know this. Jesus and Roberta understood pain. Come on, just, if you know Roberta, you know she could see it in your eyes. Amen. She could see through it. You know the Bible says that the eyes are the window to your soul. Yeah. And I don't know if there's anybody walking this planet that understood that more. Roberta, look into your eyes. And because she understood the prophetic realm, she could hear from the Lord and give you a prophetic word. Yeah. Yeah. And it would minister to your soul in that moment. It was through pain. I love this. Uh, Isaiah talks about emotional pain. Isaiah 53, which is what all of us have been walking through for the last few months, not having Roberta. 
Isaiah 53. He was despised and rejected by men. He was a man of sorrow. Listen to this. And he was familiar with our suffering. Yeah. Roberta was a woman who was familiar with our suffering. She would walk with you. She would come to your house. She would pray with you. She would bring you her home cooking. Come on, somebody. <laughs> she was familiar with your emotional pain. But how many know there's something beyond emotional pain, and that is physical pain? Isaiah 53, verse 5, two verses later says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. I don't, maybe this could be story time in a few minutes, but if you've been around Roberta, she was very good at telling stories. She would tell you the pain that she walked through and hearing her pain would allow you to walk through your pain. That's how she emulated Jesus. She, she understood pain. Here's the final one is that Jesus and Roberta understood victory. Come on. Can I get a better amen, amen. from the church today? Jesus and Roberta understood victory. Revelation 1 says this. When I saw him, speaking of Jesus, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. But he laid his hand on me and said, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last and I am the living one. I died. I love this. I just picture kind of a sarcastic Jesus. I died, but na 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 boo boo. I look, I'm alive now. I'm alive. And there it is. I'm alive forever and forever. And I think Roberta would tell us and Jesus would tell us that her Savior holds the keys to hell and grave into Hades. Yeah. She understood victory. Yeah. Roberta got it. Yeah. She got life. Yeah. You know, the Bible talks about, Solomon talks about getting life. <laughs> Roberta got it. She understood it. Second, First Corinthians says this, 15. In this life, we only have hope in Christ. We were all men most miserable, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become our first fruits. For since by man came death, by man came also, speaking of the man Jesus, also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, but even so in Christ we shall be all made alive again. But every man in his own order, Christ is our first fruit. Can I tell you? Roberta would want nothing more. And maybe there's one or two of us in this room today and you've yet to cross the line of faith. Can I tell you what would bring Roberta the most joy in this room is that if you made the decision once and for all to give your life yeah. to Jesus. If you said yes to a relationship yeah. with Jesus. And I want you to know today, God doesn't come to you condemning you. God comes to you with a loving arm, just like Roberta came to you with a loving arm. But listen, just like Jesus and just like Roberta, He's going to put his loving arm around you. He's going to smile with that big smile, but he's going to tell you, if you don't do something with that sin, you're going to go to the wrong place. Let's do something with that sin. That's right. That's right. Roberta would say the same thing. One verse and then one story. Revelation 3 says this. You know it. Jesus says to us, here I am. Stand at the door. Yeah. Knock. Yeah. If anybody hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will eat with him. And he with me. Yes. You, you may have heard me tell this story before, but I love ending all celebration of life services with this story. Um, over the years, I'm 40. I saw it. My son is graduating high school. I can't even believe it. He's graduating high school in just a few months. And over the years, we would love to play Monopoly. Anybody famous play Monopoly? Oh, yeah. Love Monopoly. Monopoly's great. You can teach your kids how to, how to count. You, you can keep, teach your kids that money's important and investing. Come on, we love Monopoly. And over the years, we play Monopoly. And I'll just tell you right now, I will steal all of your stinking money if you play Monopoly with me. I don't care if you're two or 102. I'm going to steal your money. But what, what I find fascinating about the money and find fascinating about this whole thing called Monopoly is this. There there's, comes a point in the game, and you know it, that no matter how many greenhouses and no matter how many red hotels you accumulate during the game, no matter how much you've occupied the streets of a Monopoly, whether it's Boardwalk or Park Place, no matter how much, I'm always reminded, always reminded, that at the end of every Monopoly game, there comes a moment where I snap back into reality and I realize that all of the paper money, all of the greenhouses, all of the red hotels, and all of the money has to go back in the box. Yeah. How many know I come back to reality? Yeah. Yeah. See, here's what I want to leave you with and then I'm done. Is one day for everybody in this room, your box will close. 
I know we're recording this right now. Maybe I'm speaking right out of somebody two or three years from now. You're watching this. I just want you to know that one day your box will close. Doesn't matter how much money you have. Doesn't matter how many red hotels you, you've possessed in life. Doesn't matter how many green hotels you get. All that matters is what you forwarded ahead. And I'm here to tell you today, today we celebrate a woman who forwarded a lot ahead. Yes. She's raised a great family. She raised a great family. She raised a great family. She raised great mentees. Yes. She loved people well. And I think Roberta would want us to know that it's important to forward ahead yes. to the next life. Amen. The one that matters That's right. the most. Amen. So I'm going to pray. And then we're going to listen to a song. Father, we love you. Thank you for this time that we have today. To celebrate a good woman. Dare I say a great woman. A woman of faith. A woman of prophecy. A woman of prayer. A woman of affection. Today I pray right now that yes we honor Roberta. But Father right now I pray that we honor you. Because that's what Roberta would want this to be about. I'm not going to belabor this moment. But I just want you to know if you're in this room. And you've never given your life to Jesus. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. And I would encourage you before you leave this room, I would encourage you before you leave this service, I would encourage you before you pull your head tonight, that you would ask somebody in this room, what, how can I get what Roberta had? Somebody in this room would love to give that to you. So Father, I pray you be honored in the remainder of our time today. May you be high and lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, would you listen to the song, How Great Thou Art? Yes. Oh, before the song? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I didn't know either, but we'll do this together. Come on up here. Come on up here. Yeah, we're low ladies. Don't take with me. Take your time. Take your time. Well, y'all, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone who has come. I kind of stood out the door, and so many of you would look at me mm -hmm. with that mm -hmm. look of their recognition mm -hmm. and say, you're Roberta's sister. Mm -hmm. What an honor. Mm. To, to look like her physically. The rest of my family looks like her, but not as much as me. <laughs> um, but I know Roberta and I lived a long ways from each other for a long time. But let me tell you about a different Roberta. Oh, I want to hear that. <laughs> when I was about eight years old, which would have made her about 11, we, our well had dried up. We lived on a farm in Northwest Arkansas. We took the five gallon or 10 gallon milk jug, milk can, to go down to the neighbors to get water. Well, by this time, she had driven for several years. She said, Katie, I'm gonna teach you how to drive. <laughs> this was a clutch car. You know, you have to push your foot in on the clutch and the brake and all that. Well, I think I made it a couple poops. <laughs> and she said, I'll do it. <laughs> but Roberta was just, um, she was a dear friend, typical sister, would wear my clothes to school. Are you kidding me? One day I had this favorite circle skirt, circular skirt, like we twirled around when we were young. And Roberta was just a little bit larger than I was at that time. She wore my skirt to school without being asked, okay? <laughs> This was when her home, or, or excuse me, my home room where I kept my locker was her Spanish class. I go in second period and she has on my skirt, okay? Uh, we threw high heels at each other. <laughs> but you know, it was just always done in love. <laughs> She was always with me. Uh, like you had said earlier, when you sit, when she could see pain, mm -hmm. um, she was with me when my first son was born. She literally had pain. Her brain turned to the side, and I was squeezing her hand. Mm -hmm. That's pain when you're in labor and you're somebody squeezing your hand. <laughs> anyway, 14 months later, uh, she was with me when another son was born. Mm -hmm. And she was with me through his death. Mm -hmm. But even then, we knew all about Jesus. Yes. 
Now see, I, I believe you can know all about Jesus, oh, yes. but never accept him. Yeah, yeah. True. true. You know, people, you, are you a Christian? I quit asking that. Mm. I quit saying, do you know Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a relationship yeah. with yeah. Jesus? So good. That's what matters. That's what gets you to heaven. Sure. Yeah. 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 And Roberta had that. Uh, Roberta, after my son, well, I lived with her for four months while I was pregnant with my second son because my husband was overseas. Anyway, <coughs> she was just always there. And then later, we both got filled with the Holy Spirit. Ooh. And I just, yeah, it's a whole different life. Yeah. When you can look at the, just, when you got that hotline to heaven, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and he's always there. Um, Roberta, the last 15 years, at least, since my husband and I have been married, um, called me, or I called her, three or four times a week. We were close in age, and by the way, her name is really not Roberta. Sorry, you guys. It's Bodie. <laughs> we called her Bodie as kids. But now I guess she's in the Bible. Yes. Heaven, so we yes. can call her Roberta Evelyn. <laughs> but um, she just so many times would call at the right time. In fact, yes. it took me several months to when the phone rang to think, is that Roberta? Mm -hmm. Is that Bodie calling? Mm -hmm. We walked through a lot. She took a lot of things to heaven nobody else ever knew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, wow. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. She was. She was just a person that you could tell something to, tell somebody, and she would love you no matter what it was. Yes, right. yes. And it would never go any further. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Uh, but she she loved Jesus. She would always point me back through hard times. Well. What about, you know, what would Jesus say or whatever? And in the end came the help, okay? Roberta, when I would call her with this terrible whatever, my pastor said this, <laughs> my friend did that, whatever it may be. But she would say, at the end of it, and I'd cry my heart out, she'd say, you is kind, you is good, you is beautiful. And you know, we are. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are made in his image. We are beautiful. We are to be kind. I used to tell her, Roberta, I want that on my headstone. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but each one of you, if she was here, she'd say, You is kind, mm -hmm. you is good, you is precious, you is wonderful. God blessed us. Well, our sister Yuletta and myself and Rob. My, you let them, am I taking too long? No. no. You let them, but you let them, Roberta, myself. Then Billy, which some of you may have known years ago, he lived here. And David, which still lives here. And our baby sister, Becky. Uh, Roberta loved Becky when she was little. She and Becky lived very close until she was in the fourth grade and they moved. And I have to tell you, Becky, sometimes I was a wee bit jealous of you. <laughs> <laughs> and David, he was always David. Mm. Yeah. And we all loved David. <laughs> and my brother Bill. But anyway, there's something about Roper. Mm -hmm. So I just want to thank each of you ladies who, who greeted me when I came in. And your first look was like, I've seen the ghost. Mm. <laughs> the other one was, that's Roberta's sister. Mm. What an honor you gave me. Mm. Thank you for loving her. That's what we love her. And just thank you for being here.
Thank you for sharing. I, I, I love that you shared. I, I don't know if that was planned. I'm glad it happened. Thank you, man. I'm glad it happened because uh, I think a lot of the stories have been recent. So thank you for sharing some past stories about Roberta. I like I like Roberta. I like that. We started calling her Roberta. Roberta. All right, ready to play that song? How oh, great that one.
for an amazing celebration. And although Roberta has left this earthly realm, she's joined the great cloud of witnesses Ooh, yes. that looks down and cheers us on. Yes. Andrea's prepared a, a bookmark in the back. I don't know if you noticed it on the table when you signed in. Just a tribute to her. And I think what a what an amazing and, and fitting tribute. Mm -hmm. We can put that in our Bible. Remember, every morning we have our time with the Lord. Yes. That there was a prayer warrior that walked this earth with us. Yes. And then now is in heaven looking down, cheering us on to our end yes. and to our victory. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for your love, your support. Because you need to pray for this sweet family. Because we all know grief takes time. Yes. And we're here for you. <coughs> Your mom will be so proud of you today. Yes. I'm proud yes. of you. Thanks for all that you've done to make this day so special. Let me close this in a word of prayer. God, we come before you today and we just thank you that you are with us every step of this journey. We thank you that you shared Roberta with us. That our lives are different because of her. Today as we celebrate her, we're reminded of you. And God, today as we leave, we take your love, your Holy Spirit, and Roberta's legacy, and begin to share that with the next generation and those around us, so that her life, lived in celebration of you, will be celebrated by us to point continuous people back to you. In your son's precious and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you opening the How are we doing on time? Oh, can we have a first one for a Okay. All right. I don't have anything We're good. Thank you so much for being here today. <laughs> Yes, there are some impressions to lobby.